Shaiva Siddhanta, IAST, Saiva Siddhanta, provides the normative rites, cosmology and theological categories of Agamic and Vedic Shaivam combined. Being a dualistic philosophy, the goal of Shaiva Siddhanta is to become an enlightened soul through Lord Shiva's grace. This tradition was once practiced all over India. However, the Muslim subjugation of North India restricted Shaiva Siddhanta to the south, where it merged with the Tamil Saiva movement expressed in the Bhakti poetry of the Nayanars. It is in this historical context that Shaiva Siddhanta is commonly considered a southern tradition, one that is still very much alive. The Tamil compendium of devotional songs known as Tirumurai, the Shaiva Agamas and Makanda, or Siddhanta, Shastras, form the scriptural canon of Tamil Shaiva Siddhanta. Shaiva Siddhanta encompasses tens of millions of adherents, predominantly in Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka. Today it has thousands of active temples there and numerous monastic and ascetic traditions, along with its own community of priests, the Adishavas, who are qualified to perform Agama-based Shaiva temple rituals. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Monier Williams gives the meaning of Siddhanta as any fixed or established or canonical text book or received scientific treatise on any subject as Brahma Siddhanta Brahma Siddhanta Surya Siddhanta, etc. The name of the school could be translated as the settled view of Shaiva doctrine or perfected Shaivism. History Topic. Seva Siddhanta's original form is uncertain. Some hold that it originated as a monistic doctrine, espoused by Tirumular date unknown. It seems likely to others, however, that the early Seva Siddhanta may have developed somewhere in northern India, as a religion built around the notion of a ritual initiation that conferred liberation. Such a notion of liberatory initiation appears to have been borrowed from a Pashapada tradition. At the time of the early development of the theology of the school, the question of monism or dualism, which became so central to later theological debates, had not yet emerged as an important issue. Tamil Bhakti from the 5th to the 8th CE Buddhism and Jainism had spread in Tamil Nadu before a forceful Shaiva Bhakti movement arose. Between the 7th and 9th centuries, pilgrim saints such as Sambandar, Apar and Sundarar used songs of Shiva's greatness to refute concepts of Buddhism and Jainism. Manikavakaka's heart-melting verses, called Tiravakakam, are full of visionary experience, divine love and urgent striving for truth. The songs of these four saints are part of the compendium known as Tirumurai which, along with the Vedas, Shaiva Agamas, and the Makanda Shastras, are now considered to form the scriptural basis of the Seva Siddhanta in Tamil Nadu. It seems probable that the Tirumurai devotional literature was not, however, considered to belong to the Seva Siddhanta canon at the time when it was first composed. The hymns themselves appear to make no such claim for themselves. The Bhakti movement should not be exaggerated as an articulation of a class struggle. There is nevertheless a strong sense against rigid structures in the society. Topic: <inaudible> Integration. <inaudible> In the 12th century Agorasiva, the head of a branch monastery of the Amardaka order in Chidambaram, took up the task of amalgamating Sanskrit and Tamil Siddhanta. Strongly refuting monist interpretations of Siddhanta, Agorasiva brought a change in the understanding of Shiva by reclassifying the first five principles, or tattvas Nada, Bindu, Sadasava, Isvara and Sudavidya, into the category of pasa bonds, stating they were effects of a cause and inherently unconscious substances, a departure from the traditional teaching in which these five were part of the divine nature of God. Agorasiva was successful in preserving the Sanskrit rituals of the ancient Agamic tradition. To this day, Agorasiva's Siddhanta philosophy is followed by almost all of the hereditary temple priests and his texts on the Agamas have become the standard puja manuals. His Kriyakramadiyataka is a vast work covering nearly all aspects of Shaiva Siddhanta ritual, including the daily worship of Shiva, occasional rituals, initiation rites, funerary rites, and festivals. In Tamil Shaiva Siddhanta, the 13th century Makandar, Arulnandi Sivacharya, and Umapati Sivacharya further spread Tamil Shaiva Siddhanta. 
Makander's 12 verse Savajnanabadam and subsequent works by other writers, all supposedly of the 13th and 14th centuries, laid the foundation of the Makander Sampradaya, lineage, which propounds a pluralistic realism wherein God, souls, and world are coexistent and without beginning. Shiva is an efficient but not material cause. They view the souls merging in Shiva as salt in water, an eternal oneness that is also Tunis. Shaiva Siddhanta today Topic. Shaiva Siddhanta today is practiced widely among the Hindus of southern India and Sri Lanka, especially by members of the Velalar community. It is also prevalent among Hindus of the Tamil diaspora around the world. Prominent Siddhanta societies, temples and monasteries also exist in a number of other countries. The United States island of Kauai, a part of Hawaii, is home to the Shaiva Siddhanta Church, an organization that promotes the union of worldwide Hindus, through a publication called Hinduism Today. This was founded by Saturu Savaya Subramuniaswamy (1927–2001), which is currently under the auspices of Subramuniaswamy's designated successor, Saturu Bhadanatha Valanswamy (1942). This lineage, which traces itself back to the Shaiva Siddhars of northern Sri Lanka, adheres to the philosophical position that the original Shaiva Siddhanta, as expounded by Tirumular, was and is monistic, and propagates this teaching as Advaita Shaiva Siddhanta. The famous songs of the Sri Lankan Shaiva sage, Shiva Yogaswami, attest to this view of the nature of God, soul and world as being ultimately one. Theology Texts <laughs> 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 The texts revered by the southern Saiva Siddhanta are the Vedas, the 28 dualist Hindu agamas, which form the ritual basis of the tradition, the 12 books of the Tamil Saiva canon called the Tirumurai, which contains the poetry of the Nayanars, and the Saiva Siddhanta Shastras. <laughs> Early theology Siddhas such as Satyajyoti (ca. 7th century) are credited with the systematization of the Siddhanta theology in Sanskrit. Satyajyoti, initiated by the Guru Ugrajyoti, propounded the Siddhanta philosophical views as found in the Raravatantra and Svayambhuvasutra Sangraha. He may or may not have been from Kashmir, but the next thinkers whose works survive were those of a Kashmirian lineage active in the 10th century, Ramakantha I, Vidyakantha I, Srikantha, Narayanakantha, Ramakantha II, Vidyakantha II. Treatises by the last four of these survive. King Boja of Gujarat CA 1018 condensed the massive body of Siddhanta scriptural texts into one concise metaphysical treatise called the Tattvaprakasa. Later theology The culmination of a long period of systematization of its theology appears to have taken place in Kashmir in the 10th century. The exegetical works of the Kashmirian authors Bhatta Narayanakantha and Bhatta Ramakantha being the most sophisticated expressions of this school of thought. Their works were quoted and emulated in the works of 12th century South Indian authors, such as Agorasiva and Trilokanasava. The theology they expound is based on a canon of tantric scriptures called Siddhanta Tantras or Shaiva Agamas. This canon is traditionally held to contain 28 scriptures, but the lists vary, and several doctrinally significant scriptures, such as the M. Gendra, are not listed. In the systematization of the ritual of the Shaiva Siddhanta, the Kashmirian thinkers appear to have exercised less influence. The treatise that had the greatest impact on Shaiva ritual, and indeed on ritual outside the Shaiva sectarian domain, for we find traces of it in such works as the Agnapurana, is a ritual manual composed in North India in the late 11th century by a certain Somasambhu. Topic: <laughs> Monastic orders. Topic. Three monastic orders were instrumental in Shaiva Siddhanta's diffusion through India, the Amardaka order, identified with one of Shaivism's holiest cities, Ujjain, the Matamira order, in the capital of the Chalukya dynasty near the Karnataka, and the Madhumatiya order of central India. Each developed numerous sub-orders, see Nandinatha Sampradaya Siddhanta monastics used the influence of royal patrons to propagate the teachings in neighbouring kingdoms, particularly in South India. 
From Matamaira, they established monasteries in regions now in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra and Kerala. References Sources Flood, Gavin the Tantric Body, The Secret Tradition of Hindu Religion. I. B. Tories. ISBN 1845110110. External links Southern Schools of Savism, by Surendranath Dasgupta Siddha Savism, Philosophy and Practices Studies in Seva Siddhanta, J. M. Nalaswamy Pillai, 1911 K. Ganasalingam, Notes on Seva Siddhanta Philosophy Oxford Bibliographies, Seva Siddhanta Sankara, Sivaism in Southern India, Kashmir, Lingayats